It is your host Nick, also known as Cruiser Media here, back at it again with another video. Today's video is going to be something that I actually have yet to do on the channel, and I'm pretty, pretty excited to bring you guys a video like this. It's been kind of a long time coming, it's been pretty highly requested. Um, and since I won't shell out and sell presets, I figure I may as well kind of walk you guys through my editing process when it comes to a few specific photos. So this is going to be part one of a fairly extensive series that I want to start doing. Today we're going to be looking at a picture that is worth a million words. Not this one. We're going to jump into the video, so I'm going to kind of walk you guys through how I edited this photo and we're gonna make it look like this basically kind of without the use of presets we are specifically going to be working with this aston martin valkyrie photo here and i'm gonna again walk you guys through how i edited this photo from the ground up um i think i did save a color grade preset for this specific setting uh just to make it easier if i did have another similar setting or i was shooting another car in this specific showroom um so here we are Here's the photo. Uh, I apologize, the webcam is blocking the histogram up here, but you guys don't really need to see that anyways. Uh, settings for this photo were ISO 160, 35 millimeter, my aperture was 1.4, and 1 320th second shutter speed. So this is obviously the raw photo, obviously. Um, and we are in Lightroom Classic. If you're using regular Lightroom, I will always tell you, try Lightroom Classic, it will change your life. I have a buddy who I finally convinced, he was one of two people that I convinced to switch from regular Lightroom to Lightroom Classic, and he said that it took him a little bit to kind of get used to the new UI and the actual program, but he said that it was one of the best moves he ever made, and so I'm an advocate for Lightroom Classic, so here we are using Lightroom Classic. Advice, let me know in the comments below. Anyhow, here we are with the raw photo. <clears throat> so, first thing I do, I analyze every single pixel of the photo. First thing that I really take a look at is my white balance. Now here, it was like midday, it was super bright, super sunny. Obviously, here we have these windows right here, windows over here, and the most of this room here is white. Most part shoot on auto white balance, and I definitely should have changed it for these photos, but luckily we can Mo more often than not correct the l white balance if you do end up shooting in a bad white balance or something. So the first thing I'm going to take a look at is the lighting. We're going to assess the lighting and we're going to work with the lighting. That's going to be under this tone category here. We're going to work with tone, the curve, presence, and then we're going to jump into the white balance and that's where we're really going to start focusing on the coloring. And obviously, you know, we're going to be bouncing around a little bit, so keep track of everything that's happening here. I don't really care to show what's out here because it this is a dealership, so it's just this, and there's nothing interesting outside besides a few trees, tree, highway buildings, and some cars on the actual lot. So a stylistic preference in this choice, or in this photo, I'm gonna kind of leave the exposure and the highlights untouched. We're mostly just gonna be working with contrast here and the shadows and the blacks. So we're gonna bump up the contrast just a tad, bring up the shadows quite a bit actually, and then I do bump the whites, that just adds a little bit more texture and um, some more brightness to the photo. It, I, I can't really explain how it works, but it really just brings a photo together instead of it looking flat like this. If you, you know, flats your flavor, go right ahead. Be my guest um oops what did i just do and i always bring the shadows i lift the shadows bring down the blacks that also helps retain more detail instead of completely like blowing out the blacks and the shadows here i always drop this i rarely ever will bring up the blacks above zero more often than not it's in the negatives uh for presence here we're going to bring up the texture just a little bit i'm not going to really touch clarity and dehaze until after I've somewhat finished this photo, then I'm gonna get more into the clarity dehaze and make our fine tunes after we establish the color grade, get the HSL tab figured out, all of that good stuff. As for the tone curve, we're just gonna go with a very basic S curve here. 
So we're going to lift the highlights just a tad. We're going to bring the mid-tones. Let's see. We're going to see what, what we're looking like with the mid-tones here. Bringing them up looks a little bit funky. Bringing them down looks a little bit funky here as well. So we're probably going to end up splitting the mid-tones. We're going to see what this is looking like here. So we're going to bump here. And we're going to drop. Uh, bring this point down just a hair. And we're going to drop it here. This is going to retain more detail here. Obviously, we're in a super reflective showroom with giant floor-to-ceiling windows, so we're going to inevitably get reflections, no matter what you do with your CPL, unless you're doing a multiple exposure. And then as for the shadows here, we're going to drop these as well, because we don't want to crush them. We don't want to crush the blacks. So we're going to drop that just a little bit as well. Now, we're going to get into the coloring and the color grading which is where the secret sauce is if you don't touch the color grading section i highly recommend that you start doing it get creative with it start playing around with different color palettes because it can really take a photo from zero to 100 real fast but with that being said it can also ruin a photo it's very sensitive so you can either make or break a photo just with the color grid tab so you really want to jump into the color grading and start learning start experimenting Find a style that works for you. So I think our mid-tones were going to go for more of a kind of warm setting here. So we're going to bring this out just a hair. And we're, let's see, what are we, what are we working with here? Mid-tones, let's bring that up a little bit more to see what we're actually working with here. Okay. So our mid-tones, we want to be more orange here to show that obviously, you know, we've got some sunlight coming through. We're going to kind of go with more of a neutral slash golden hour-esque ish type tones. Our highlights, we obviously want this to reflect that as well. So we're going to go more red on these ones, but we're going to bring it down just a little bit. And we're going to play around with the intensity here we're going to drop that just a hair and we'll bring this one up just a bit as for the shadows we're definitely going cool on the shadows blue car we want to help retain that here yes and as for blending if you don't know you can hold alt or command on blending and see what the actual colors are doing here. So we're gonna lean more towards there. And our balance, since we're trying to kind of neutralize the tones here, we're gonna bring that down just a hair. Now I, I'm struggling to adjust the horizon on this. The car looks off, but then so does the showroom. So now we're gonna jump into the HSL. And this is where you can really dive deep into the coloring. Um, we don't hardly have any red in this photo and this part here is gonna be photoshopped out. So we're just gonna kind of leave the red alone. Again, if you want to um, show only the colors that you're working with in the HSL, hold Alt or Command on Mac and it's gonna show you where these colors are. So for example, if we take blue, it's obviously going to show the car and then clearly we're adjusting the hue here uh, as for the yellow we're gonna take this is really the only one that i'm going to touch hue wise in the uh hsl portion um what, what's this here we've got only a little bit on the windshield so we're actually going to make this one more yellow as well as you can see it's highlighting the windshield here so we're going to make this more orange and it's also going to get some of this fringe here that we're getting across the top and the back of the car since it's being um, backlit by all of this natural light. As for blue, we're going to leave the blue saturation here. This is going to be a big one. As you can see, we're missing a lot of the blue here on the, on the car just due to the reflections. So we are going to crank this blue up just a bit we're going to crank the aqua up as well a bit a little bit over here in this area <clears throat> the greens we don't need the greens, so we're going to desaturate the green we're going to desaturate the yellow a little bit but we're going to crank the orange up just a tad 
purple and magenta, I typically always, these, these are gonna be some more chromatic aberration adjustments more often than not, um, which I'll more than likely just desaturate those or turn them red. I, I get a lot of chromatic aberration on red cars. So I would just kind of change the hue to red and you don't really know. Instead of desaturating it and that portion of the car turns gray, I'm just saying, it works. It works. But you gotta play around. Of course, every photo is gonna be different. So, you know, luminance here. We're gonna bring the luminance on the blue down quite a bit, actually. That's gonna help with this reflection that we have going on here on the hood and roof line of the car. So we're gonna bring that down just a tad. And we're probably gonna crank up the, we really want this blue to pop. That, that's our goal here. So we're gonna crank that blue up just a little bit more. And for exposure, we're gonna actually drop the exposure just a little bit more. We're gonna bring the shadows up just a hair. And now here's where we're gonna kind of neutralize the tones. So we're gonna bring the white balance down just a hair to make it more cool. And let's see what this does. So this is gonna add obviously more magenta, which is actually what I'm going for here. So we're gonna bring that up just a couple notches, nothing crazy, just something light. And now we're gonna add just a little bit of de, de haze, a tiny, tiny bit, because this could very easily ruin a photo. I see a lot of photos like this come across Instagram and it makes me wanna puke. So we're gonna add just a tiny bit of dehaze. That's gonna get rid of some of this bloom over here and on the back of the car, obviously. Clarity, I'm gonna drop that to about negative two. That's pretty much my standard here when I'm shooting with the Promist filter. And then for texture, we're just gonna bring that up just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit, a little bit more. And that's gonna give the car obviously more texture. Now we're gonna go drop all the way down. Detail here. Sharpening, I really don't mess with sharpening at all, but I do always bring the masking up we're gonna bring up the sharpening just a tad. That's gonna help <clears throat> with the car. And as you can tell with the masking, hold uh, Alt or Command on Mac and you're gonna get this outline. So this is gonna show you what is actually being sharpened in the photo. So I pretty much drag this all the way up and it's going to keep just the hard lines on the car and it's gonna sharpen those up just a little bit. Noise reduction, we don't need noise reduction on this photo. I mean, it could probably use a little bit, but and that we'll, we'll save that for another day. Defringe here, this is going to be a big one. Uh, a lot of people don't actually know about this, or so it seems people don't know about this, but I always crank these up just a, just a hair. This one, we don't have any purple chromatic aberration. We've got just a little bit showing on this side here, but as you can tell, that's going to just gray everything out. That is this color. So it, again, this is something that can make or break the details of a photo. So we're going to do just a tiny, tiny bit. Now this is just reflecting off of this here giving somewhat of a purple fringe. Now the green one is going to help a lot. As you can see, we have a lot of green aberration here, fringing around the spoiler of the car and the back, the roof scoop, all of this. So we're gonna crank that all the way up and that's going to neutralize that green. Again, it's so small, but it's so helpful because sometimes that stuff sticks out like a sore thumb and it really can make or break a photo. Like I was saying, you know, it's all about the details. It comes down to the finer details and your ability to catch them with your eye. That's what separates the good from the bad photographers. So that that is something that you do need to watch out for. I see a lot of people overlook this and it looks horrible. Sometimes, sometimes it's not so bad. Sometimes there's really nothing that you can do about it. And I've ran into that situation before where I couldn't change the hue. I couldn't get rid of it because it would take out an area of the car like this here so there's sometimes you can't just do much but it is just one of those finer details that you do want to pay attention to as you continue in your photography career so now there's one more thing we're going to go ahead and export this photo we're just going to do it to the desktop valkyrie i probably spelt that wrong but whatever so we're going to export this and now this is where photoshop really comes in handy there's a few things in photos like this that i really want to clean up and Photoshop has now made it easier than ever. So we're gonna jump right into Photoshop here. Boom, bam, there we go. So the first thing that I'm noticing, this black bar here, and this is a light bar, but that is very off-putting. It takes your eyes to this bar here, and it's kind of just a unnecessary distraction that we're gonna go ahead and get rid of. 
We're gonna take our polygon lasso tool and we're just going to do a very basic selection. We're gonna kind of get that line in there as well. And then more often than not, if you're just removing stuff from the unsightly things from a photo, all you have to do is leave the prompt empty and click generate. And bada bing, bada boom, there in a few seconds, boom, we've got almost a perfect hidden little thing. I just noticed this for the first time and I forgot to take it out of the original set, but that's kind of annoying. So yeah, this is, Photoshop is just, the only reason I use it is for quick cleanup for unsightly things as such. This here, just because this is sticking out and it's a little bit off-putting, I'm just going to generate something quick to get rid of that and more off, mo most likely it's going to replicate this here and just kind of carry it over there. Uh, look at that. Almost seamlessly, but for posting to Instagram, it's really not that bad. And look at that. There we go. Side by side. Oh. So we... Oh gosh, what just happened? So we just went from this to this. Very basic color grading, very basic HSL adjustment, a lot of coloring, or uh, a lot of lighting adjustments, but that, I mean, look at that. Look at the difference there. Pretty crazy, right? But anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this first uh, little video of this series. Uh, I do plan on doing many more with different settings, different scenarios, different backgrounds, different cars, different colors, a whole bunch of that, different lighting situations. I want to turn this into a kind of a larger series um, because it has been highly requested over Instagram. I mean, I get so many DMs all the time about people asking for presets, but I won't shell out and sell them because I believe it's a scam and I don't want to scam anybody. So why not just do it live so that everybody can take a look? But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you want to practice on these photos, I will include a Google Drive link in the description below. You can download a, a couple of these photos from this photo set that I shot with the Aston Martin Valkyrie and post them up on Twitter, post them up on Instagram and tag me. And I, I want to see, you know, if you guys did end up downloading these, I want to see if you A, were able to recreate this or if you had a different idea in mind and a different edit and you did your own thing and it looks great. Tag me in whatever you do, but there will be a link in the description below to download these raw photos. Um, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Tag me on Twitter if you do end up editing any of these. Uh, I would love to see what you guys come up with. And yeah, this has been Nick, and I will see you all in the next video.